we're, we're working triangle this week. Uh, just from, we'll do our, more finishing the triangle than the setup, so we'll, we'll do a pretty basic setup. Um, I'm in closed guard. I need to I need to break Tim's posture and get control of one arm. So we want when we want to do a triangle, we want one arm in and one arm out. Okay, so uh, what's going to actually break Tim's posture is not my my arms. It's very hard to to pull someone down if, if they got decent posture. It's my legs. Okay, so my legs need to be locked tight, and I'm pulling my knees towards my chest. That's what's going to get him forward. Okay, so my the role of my arms is more just to stop. Tim from posting. So he's got to post on me. This isn't going to work. Okay? So if I can just elevate his hands or clear him out the way for a second and my knees are pulling in, I'll break his posture. Okay? Once his posture is broken, I can hold the head or the arm and that'll keep him from, from re-posturing. Okay? But we're not trying to pull him down with our arms like this. This doesn't, doesn't really work. We want to use our legs, trap them, and we're just going to get one arm. Okay? I need to stop one arm from going, uh, like make it so he he can't take that arm back behind my legs while I try and fish the other one behind my, my legs. Okay. So, basic simple one, I'm just going to grab the wrist, push it to his chest, open my legs, and we're going to lock the triangle over the top of that. Okay. So I've trapped. We break the posture, hold the one arm nice and tight with a good overhook, grab the wrist of the free hand, pin it to the chest, and we're going to lock our triangle over the top of that. Make sure you're over the shoulder. Now immediately, I can't let Tim remove one of his arm, like this arm, or put this one back in. So when I'm curling the triangle here, it's not a squeeze. I'm actually curling my uh, heels towards my hips. Okay? Try and try and put one of your arms back through. Okay? This should be very difficult for him to do. If you're doing a squeeze like this, like pinching your knees together, there's gaps, which they can sometimes work their arms through. Okay? So it's a curl. We're here, we're curling down with our, with our heels like this, okay? This also serves to stop Tim from posturing, okay? So when I'm doing this, Tim's trying to posture up. I pull with my knees towards my chest, and that's what helps hold him down, okay? Uh, similar principle. If he does have posture, it's my, my legs that are pulling forward that gets him down, not me reaching for his head, okay? So we need to be clearing grips, pulling down, and then trying to hold their posture down. Once we've got them down, we can start holding on to the head. Okay? So let's just do that entry first, nice and quick. So we're just going to clear their arms. Um, from now, don't even have, because I want to do more of the finish, so they don't even have to have a good grip. We're just stopping their arms from pushing, we're pulling our knees towards their chest, and we're getting a good overhook okay? from here. Grabbing the wrist, pinning it to the chest, trapping one arm in and one arm out, curling our heels down nice and tight, and once they're in nice and close, we can reach around the head and hold the head. Okay? Let's just do that real quick. Uh, I'll tell you when to swap. Okay? Three, two, one. Okay, so. <laughs> once, we've, uh, once we're here, as I said, if he's got posture, I'm wanting to curl my knees towards my chest and hold on to the head now. Or at least, when I say the head, it can be your own leg or or uh, anything as long as we're keeping their posture down. It's really hard for them to posture up now that I'm holding the head. And what this does now is I can actually open my legs, okay, and posture out, Tim, okay. So the fact that I can open my legs means I can use my legs to change my, adjust my position to set up the choke, okay. While I'm just using my legs to break his posture, if I let go and I don't have the head, he's immediately gonna just pull his uh, posture up and I lose everything, okay. So once I've broken the posture, we reach around the head or our own leg or whatever and we start working to get a better angle. Most of everyone go like more over there. In that angle. So you can see here, my right leg here is sort of on the side of his neck, but I want it like cutting ideally right across the front of his neck to apply the choke. So from here if I squeeze and pull, it's probably not Especially if he's got a, a decent grip, it's, it's probably not going to finish. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to change the angle. So this thigh, which is really the one that's going to be doing the choking, cuts right across the neck. So have a look at this. Okay, want my hips out to the side, like this. Okay, and now when I do a nice hamstring curl, you can see that my thigh is cutting into his neck. Okay? That's the angle I need 
So what it is, it's my hips going out to the side, but I'm getting on my right hip as I do that. Okay, that really cuts that leg across. Sometimes people move their hip to the side, but they're kind of like they're facing that way, and I lose the tension. It needs to be out to the side and onto my right hip. Okay. So we're going to do that. Now that we can hold the head, I can open my legs, my foot can go on the hip, and I can move my, my hips out to the side. And make sure you actually put some tension against their neck when you do that, okay? So I don't just relax my right leg, it's actually like pushing into his neck, here like this. I grab my shin, pull it high, and I wanna lock all the way, like the, the further across here, if I could lock it like next to my knee, I would. Obviously his shoulder's in the way, but I wanna get as far across there as possible. Turn my feet so they almost face in the same plane. Now I'm just gonna curl down with both hamstrings, okay? So here, Tim's probably already choking a bit. I can probably put like, uh, I can probably put like 10% of a squeeze here and that'll probably make him tap. Okay, so if you get the angle right, everything should be very low energy to finish. You right? <laughs> okay, so again, Tim's got posture, like this. Uh, clear the arms again to make sure you can break their posture. We don't need the arm across our body to finish a triangle. Uh, what we need is the right angle with our legs, okay? We're gonna hold the head, foot goes on the hip, and we move out to the side, like this. From here, gripping your shin, if you grab your own leg here, you're gonna make it hard, you're gonna block your own leg from coming through, okay? So grab your shin like next to the head and have plenty of room to bring your knee across, okay? From here, turning the feet out and just a gentle curl with your, with your feet, okay? It should be enough, all right? Let's do that and we'll go over some, uh, that's our basic one. I'll go over some common issues you have like trying to get it against some bigger people uh, and if they're hiding their arm pretty well. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, so triangles. Triangles are much easier when you've got long legs and you're against someone with narrow shoulders. Um, let me show you. I'll borrow Liv first and then we'll use Edgy. But So with Liv here, we've got the triangle. What I can do is I can lock up right behind the shoulder here, no problem, okay? That's easy for me to do. My legs are long relative to Liv's shoulder width, so I can put the triangle on easy like that, okay? All right, but borrow this shit. And I try and do the same thing. So we're here, and I try and lock up behind the shoulders. I can't even... Uh, get near my knee, okay? So I have to just lock like a closed guard. And that's much weaker as a structure, okay? So what it is, guys, is the, the distance from your neck to the shoulder. And the wider your shoulders are, or, or the more they're pulling their shoulder back, the harder it is to lock a triangle over that. So if, if that's a problem, what we want to do is we want to actually remove their shoulder out of the triangle and try and make a loop around their arm and their neck, okay? Obviously not letting their elbow free, but this, even if I've got broad shoulders, this can still be, be narrow here, okay? So we're gonna try and choke there. So borrow, yeah, shit. Okay, here, like this, instead of trying to lock here, what I'm doing, I'll, I'll grab my shin, if you, if you can, or even without holding the shin, I'm gonna be hip escaping and sort of letting his shoulder uh, slip free. Now I have to try to maintain some pressure on his neck with this leg. Okay, so when I hip away, I don't want to lose his head like that. I need to keep that relatively tight, so I'm kind of pulling his head tight against my leg. But I want to move it so that I'm effectively just trapping now his shoulders free, and I can lock up a full triangle over his arm and his neck. Okay, and this will choke. Yeah. Uh, so even with someone with big shoulders, you still can choke them. If you're blessed with long legs, this will rarely be the case, and you can just put a triangle over their shoulder, okay? But if they've got broad shoulders, we're aiming to free their shoulder from the choke and lock up around the head and the arm, okay? You can't let their elbow free, okay? If I let his elbow go past there, I've lost everything, okay? So the whole time, as I do that hip escape, I'm staying this leg and my hips very tight to the elbow. Pull that elbow free. So it's coming up to here 
and then we're working to lock off over the top of that. Um, you can still do that even if they're smaller. Like for live now, if I do that same thing on live, like I'm pretty much going to be locking almost my knees together here like this. But I can still trap just the head and the arm, and it's still going to going to choke. So uh, you, I, I want you to practice. Pretend your partner is uh, has. I either, either pretend you got really small legs, or your partner has broad shoulders. Um, and I want you to actually like just practice locking off the triangle just with the elbow caught, and let the shoulder free behind your. Do that. Three, two, one. Grab our regular, regular size human now. <laughs> okay, guys. So um, one, one good defense that, that Tim can do is he can put his hand like behind my hips and and really uh, lock that arm down tight. Okay, so that makes that space. Uh, yeah, he's like broadening that gap between his shoulder and his neck. So I cannot lock the the triangle over that and I'm gonna have trouble I can't just like hip escape here because he's actually holding that that really tight okay so this is one defense people will use and generally the longer he holds that the more tired I get because I'm constantly got some pressure with my legs here okay so what I'm gonna do when this is the case I actually want to try to lock the triangle the, the opposite way to, to normal so normally I'm looking for a locking this way here I'm gonna try if I can try to lock my feet up this way. Now even if it's just crossing it like that, it doesn't matter, okay? It just gives me a chance now to bridge up on my shoulder here and my back and start digging underneath that, that elbow. All right, so again, if, I try to, if I'm trying to lock the normal way, it's actually hard to, when I bridge, I find it hard to, to turn and, and dig. But when I get my left leg under, I can sort of turn in a little more. I'm gonna pummel through this gap at the elbow, not under the wrist or anything, right at the elbow. Okay, so keep that tight. Tip. We're gonna work through that gap all the way until our elbows dip. I'm gonna lock my, my hands together like this, pulling my elbows tight to my to my chest. Like that. Okay. So now his uh, his arms connected to my chest. So if I can extend my back, it's my like back extension against his, his arm strength. So from here. Should be able to open that arm out from the body. Okay, again. We lift up, sorry. If we can, try and lock our feet this way. Lift up, pummel through, connect the arm to the chest, and then we're pulling away to open the arm. Okay, immediately we've got a Kimura option. Okay, so if he keeps his arm bent, we're going straight to the Kimura, and it's finished. But he could straighten that arm to stop that. Okay, now the arm's straight, the elbow's away from the body, we're back to our regular. Triangle finish, and we can lock it off from there. Again, Tim locks that arm down nice and heavy. We're gonna try to lock our feet the opposite way, bridge up, and get underneath that elbow all the way deep with your hands. So you should be able to connect your hands like this. Okay. This isn't enough. This is gonna be, if we fight here, hold tight, Tim. I'm not gonna pull his arm out. I need to get my elbow deep, okay? Fight that now, Tim. Okay, it's gonna pull it out. Right. Once the elbow's open like that, he's straightened his arm, so I'm not going to go Kimura. That's fine. We keep the elbow open. We adjust our angle and lock off the triangle. Yep. When do you go to look and when you try to keep that arm out? When would I go to more flutter? You can go to uh, probably more based on his head position. Okay, so if, if Tim's doing this, but he's putting his head down here. Uh, okay. Here is actually going to be hard for me to rip it out. I don't get to extend into it well. So I'd probably put my leg over and start trying to like push that to an normal plot. But if his head's on on this side, I should be going to be held tight here. When I get my body connected, I should be able to rip that out. Uh, you can go, pro you might see there's a potential for a prone arm by here. It's possible, but it's not as high percentage as the triangle. So I would probably go for it and as they slip the arm, just be very ready to make sure they don't get that elbow back. Like, don't let them, the main thing, don't let it, you know they like that defense, don't let them do that. Again, once you've opened the elbow out, keep it, keep it open so that they can't defend from the regular triangle. Yeah. All right, let's have a quick go of that, and then we'll get into the training. Three, two, one.